Welcome to week four of your Effective Living series on the theme 2023 Startup Pack. This week we're focusing on setting the right financial foundations for the year. As you know, these are tough economic times for not just Ghana, but for the whole world. This week we'll try and give you some insights into how to understand the financial situation, not just of yourself, but of the country, and also how to plan and budget your way into financial freedom. My name is Bernard Avile. My guest is a good friend of the station who's been on this platform a few times, Charles Mensah. I call him my personal financial guru. Charles, good to have you. Thanks for having me, Bernard. Happy and, uh, New Year. Happy New Year, too. You're looking well. Thank you. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing well. You're doing well? Yes, yes. I, I can guess your services will be in high demand because a lot of people are not sure what to do with their money and because of all the economic times, but we'll come to all of that. What I wanted you to do first was to tell us whether things are that bad, you know? Ghana's debt to GDP is 105%. Lots of people have had certain levels of haircut and people are not very happy. As a financial guru, before you even start a presentation, how worried should we be about our finance in 2023? Um, naturally, you, one has to be worried because mm. if you cannot service your debt, mm. uh, it, it kills the spirit. Um, but in there, there's always an opportunity. Mm. So you've got to look out for what opportunity can I play out if you take ghana for instance mm. we have a lot of assets locked up mm -hmm. when as i said locked up we have the oil we have the gold whatever we have a lot of natural resources locked up it's a structure of the natural resource that we haven't done right i think the government in the past attempted to um, raise funds out of future natural resources it didn't work well I'm referring to Japan. It didn't work well in terms of the PR aspect of it. But if I look at it critically, we could have raised money out of it and used it for economic activity. That would earn us regular, constant income. That's the track. Now, if you only raise it for consumption, naturally it means that for the next 15, 20 years, we'll be in trouble. Mm. So it's high time that Ghana as a country sits back, reflect on the natural resources, and structure a deal and pass a law to guarantee the structure. Because sometimes, like the GET Fund, the original concept of the application of the GET Fund is not being done. Mm. Because it was meant for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you see it being used for um, other things other than the infrastructure. So when it, and then also the schools, it all has to be captured properly. And mm. then GET Fund goes in there. Unfortunately, if you look mm. at the revenue tied into GET Fund, mm. It was supposed to be a VAT element specifically for mm. get front. Mm. To date, they haven't done that. So I would have requested and begged that in future, when we pass a law tie into some revenue, it should trigger immediately the VAT element for the or get, get front levy is end. We shouldn't wait for 60 days. 90 days before they'll pay them something. No. So you're saying some of our challenges could be finding a way to monetize our assets, but others are also just designing your cash flow and making sure that there's ready money to do certain things. I, I don't want you to get ahead of yourself. So let's, let's talk about the topic. So the topic is practical ways to get out of debt. Now, practical because I know there are many theories around these things, but I brought you in because you're a very practical guy. So I want you to start by telling us how people even get into debt. First and foremost, <clears throat> people get to debt because, one, they were keeping up appearances. Like the Christmas just passed. Mm -hmm. People were having parties. They may have planned it maybe six months ahead. People are getting married. They may have planned it a year ahead. Mm -hmm. Next door neighbor, you are getting pressure from your colleagues, your parents, to get married. Mm. And therefore, you attended one or two weddings, and then you are pushed to do it. You naturally go and borrow. Once you're borrowing, you are denying yourself of a future potential revenue. In other words, you are utilizing the proceeds now, and you will be servicing it from next year or from next month. So your future revenue is already tied in. Unless otherwise, you are pushing the money into a capital expenditure where you can hold on to the asset. Should the servicing become a problem, you can sell the TV, you can sell the fridge, whatever it is because that's what you use the money for. But where you borrow for consumption, then naturally you have a problem. That, that's one. Two, there were some investment decisions that people took. Mm. They heard that there's this company that pays high interest rates. Mm. 
They rushed whatever they have. They went in there. When they only to withdraw the amount, they are not getting the proceeds for the amount. They've lost money, so debt has been created. Mm. And the one with health. Mm. If you didn't do insurance for your health mm. or for your sibling, and you know something hit at you, raising money becomes a difficult. So you go and end up borrowing. So all these things put pressure. Mm. In our part of the world, where families are dependent on the one who is creating money for them, education for family members can come in. So your a sibling just got an admission at a university. Mm -hmm. And there isn't much fund in the house, so they come and beg you. So you go and borrow those things. So these are the things that comes into it. And then also those who have credit lines at the banks, like overdraft, or they have cards that they use, so that they will do procurement that the things that they've bought, they don't really need it. But for the fact that they went to the shop and things are cheap, they will end up procuring it. So don't buy the things because it's cheap. Buy it because you need it. Mm -hmm. And once these things are being pan out in your life and you are utilizing money mm. and the money that you're utilizing is not coming from yourself but from opm other people's money then you have borrowed mm. and when you borrow it will create debt for you so these are some of the causes okay. that people have debt so you've given us for keeping up appearances investment decisions which are bad health with no insurance education needs which have not been planned for and then procurement because things may be cheap but do you admit that some of the debt could be caused by no fault of people for example what is happening in our economy now as you said you may have invested in a general institution but because of the debt exchange and some of the things happening people's savings may have been wiped out so is it all the time that your debt is your fault or it's possible that based on external conditions you can also be in debt thank you for that very critical question everything is your fault Mm. Because the investment decision that you took, you should have looked at what if. Even savings at the bank. When you go to the bank early morning and you deposit your funds there, because you trust the bank, but you must also always ask yourself critical question. What if something happens? And therefore, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So you must look at a certain way Mm -hmm. of managing your own expenditure, your own revenue streams, and then tie in with your age. So when it is that you've grown at a certain level, maybe you're reaching uh, 50 plus, your investment decisions has to be maybe you're buying treasurables. When you're young, you can invest in mutual funds. The crisis that we're having definitely will come out. Definitely will come out. So the things are too immediate. People are rushing and things. So when you are rushing, you don't make rational decisions. So those mutual funds, those who have lost the haircut and things, it's just for a period. It would bounce back. But what it is that if it's it bounces back, then the fund managers themselves shouldn't be paying themselves huge bonuses when they bounce back. Because people who have been punished to survive must also be helped when things improve. And that's the kind of statement that should come out from the investment decision or, or the policy makers that, listen, we have a problem now. We are suffering haircut. But when things bounce back, we'll help you out. I was just going to suggest that instead of zero, mm -hmm. I think they should be able to do some 5% for the first year. They interest you. They mean. interest me. I mean, it should no way it should be zero. There must be something coming to you. So you know that the investment returns is lower than to say the investment returns is zero. So you need to have some 5 I prefer to get 5% next year seven percent ten percent growth rather than losing totally and then having a 25 percent coming coming through mm. something must be earned because mm. people are going to depend that on that small return that comes in even if it's two three four percent mm. to pay medical bills because decisions that people make every now and then they tie in with their age and we even you know this we've been at it helping people teaching people some of these investment decisions so when these things started panning out i got a lot of calls that you advise us to put money in mutual funds. You advise us, what, are, what should we do now? So that's why I keep on saying that it shouldn't be zero. There must be something small to start with mm -hmm. so that the, boost, the confidence boosting will be there. Okay. So if I hear you correctly, in the initial part, you said debt is like bringing forward your enjoyment. 
so you can use your money to pay later. So it's basically making a decision that will negatively affect your future. You've also said that even with the current economic situation, we must take responsibility and accept that it is our fault because we could have diversified. There are different things we could have done. Fair enough. Let's now come to how do you get out? So you are owing people. You are a company. Or let's start with the individual. An individual who is in debt. Maybe the bank loan, you are servicing it. The interest rates are too high. Or even you don't have enough money to even do the amortization. What are some steps we can take? Or what do you do when you realize that okay. you're in a situation like this? First, uh, first thing you do, and I'm talking to uh, um, individuals here. First thing you do is to relax, mm -hmm. take a paper, and list all your debt, irrespective of the amount involved. Mm -hmm. Many a time, Mami Akam, which is the, the canteen shop that you usually buy food from, sometimes you are owing three days, four days, you haven't mm -hmm. paid. So when mm -hmm. I compile your list, you end up losing that one out. So when you do a lot of Mami Akam around, you probably would think that, hey, that's, that's a lot of money. So you need to have paper, pen, and this time around, I will encourage you to use red pen to, to write it. That shows the thing that's going. In other words, you need to have money. So you list from your uh, mortgage, if mm -hmm. you have one, from your car loan, if you have one, mm -hmm. from your education loan, if you have one, mm -hmm. the food, if you have one, loan from the bank, if you have one, companies outstanding, if you have one, I will use from your friends if you have one. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a whole list of it. That's one. Mm -hmm. The second one is that you look at the tenor of those lists that you've compiled. Mm -hmm. What is the repayment schedule for it? Mm -hmm. Are you paying monthly? Are you paying weekly? Are you paying quarterly? Mm -hmm. And is there any interest cost? So if there's any interest cost, then you rank them. Those that have come with interest cost, it means that they are going to eat into your future income. Now, those that are interest-free, like company giving you a loan, is interest-free. So, rank them A and B. So, A being the interest charge loan, and a B being the non-interest charge loan. Mm -hmm. And then you compare them up. Mm -hmm. It will end up giving you some repayment schedule. You yourself would have done that. Some repayment schedule. In other words, how much do you have to cough every month to meet the repayment schedule that the contract you signed for? Mm -hmm. That a friend agreed, the promise that you gave your friend that you paid two weeks' time. Put all those things there. And then you look at the repayment schedule. When you look at the repayment schedule, it gives you a certain amount that you need to generate net of your current expenditure. Mm -hmm. Net of your current expenditure. Current expenditure means that, you know, things that consumption you, you do every now and then. Mm -hmm. If you look at it critically, you will notice that your income will not even cover your expenditure, mm -hmm. let alone service your debt or repayment of your principal. Do that because people many a time only remember the high debt, the high amount. So the guys who is giving them pressure and they ignore the other one. Mm -hmm. So by the time he clears Kojo, I just calls the following morning says that, when are you paying my money? Hmm. He didn't factor uh -huh. anything. So that's why I'm asking that you go step by step. Now, when you compare all these things, and then you start making calls, when I say making calls, start approaching people, that you have to meet their debt because your income is not enough. Now, if your income is not enough, what can you do as a person? Mm -hmm. You have to look at multiple streams. You have to look at other ways because the capacity to service the debt becomes a challenge. Mm -hmm. Your expenditure becomes a challenge. And that's why you have to admit that, Charles, I am broke. Mm -hmm. This thing of covering it up that, oh, Nyami Beye, it's okay, and things like that, it's not an admission. It's just a hope business. Mm -hmm. But admit that you have crisis. Mm -hmm. Earlier I had stated that look for the causes why you got there first. Mm -hmm. So now they've done the list and admit that you have a problem. Then you go to the last stage, which is, how do I service the debt? Mm. Before we come to that, let me just tell our viewers and our listeners that this is the Effective Living series. We are in week four of the series, and the theme for week four is financial foundations. And this week we'll be talking about money, investments, and how to set the right financial foundation for the year. The 2023 Effective Living series is on the theme 2023 Startup Pack, and my guest is Charles Mensah, 
who is walking us through practical ways of getting out of debt. He says you have to know your current state. Take a paper, list all your debts, look at the tenure of the loans, and arrange them based on interest and non-interest. Rank your loans, call your creditors, admit you are in a crisis. Now he's going to look at how do you get out, how do you address this. So you've done all this, you've admitted you are in debt, you are broke. What, what's the next step? Some steps to, do you renegotiate? Do you call the bank? Do you start selling your property? What are some of the things you can do to start, based on the information you've gotten from this exercise, to start making remedial measures? Okay, maybe, yes, um, you, you have to f first look at the income because when you did the, 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 the flow, it gives you a sense of how much is coming into your hands. Mm -hmm. Now, your expenditure on regular basis is higher or is even a little bit over the income. Mm -hmm. So it means that you have a challenge, debt, debt alone service in the debt. So you need to look at other sources of income. Mm -hmm. Extremely important, mm -hmm. other sources of income. You may have a particular asset in the house mm -hmm. that you bought it for a particular need. And if that need is zero, mm -hmm. you can strip it. You can sell it because you are trying to come out. Mm -hmm. Friends that I know of had different plots of land. Mm -hmm. Four year, two year, when it was uh, really any income. Mm -hmm. When a crisis came through, they approached me and I said, look, release some of the assets. Mm -hmm. So they released <coughs> some of the assets. I mean, the structure was different because it's personal, so I, I, I can't. But they released the assets. They got some money and they renegotiated the loans that they have with other people. And then some of them they pay outright. Outright because the creditors okay, if you can raise Charles, if you can give me fifteen thousand cities out of my twenty two thousand, I'll write it off for you. So there's no future. So when he raised the money, he had negotiated before he did this. When they raised the money, they went ahead and paid the people. And then gradually, within a year, they are back on track. When they came back on track, now that they are back on track, they decided to go back to buy assets. This time around, I told them that they should buy service plots mm. because that one, at least, the value would appreciate. So these are the things that you have to. Because people don't like admitting, especially when you have a spouse and children that you don't want to give them um, um, a story or some information that is bad. You, even, uh, you leave home late mm. or early, you come home late, they don't want to see you because before you realize, somebody's knocking at the door and the kids go and open the gate. Who is there? It's Mami Adwa who's coming for the loan. And sometimes they come and shout. So you avoid all these little, little things. You Look, run away from the house. Admit <laughs> that there is issue. Mm. For all you know, the kids who used to go to school early morning with sausages, they will change. Mm. Who used to eat conflicts, they will change. Maybe they will have a porridge. In the morning, I'm mean, referring to the cuckoo. Mm. Gobe became popular. Because when crisis came in, but Gobe has been there time, time immemorial, mm. but nobody averted their mind to it. So when you speak to the family, I'm referring to those who are married with kids, speak to the family, mm. because they've enjoyed before. Now we have a little crisis. Talk to them. You think they don't know? They observe you because mm. a little little thing you are annoyed. <laughs> so your kids will, will observe you, and sometimes they clear with mommy to see that. Uh, how is daddy today or, or how is mommy today in the bad mood, is in the bad mood? Mm. don't let financial crisis push into that mood mm. where they are scared to come and discuss things to do let them know discuss that and then you start mm. please if you're spending more time with friends and you're not earning anything out of it mm. it's high time that you see how to reposit the mm. time because mm. time they say is money mm. and if time is money and you're hanging four hours five hours daily mm -hmm. with friends and you're not earning anything why don't you turn it around? Maybe if I have a skill, apply it properly. These days of social media, mm -hmm. you can't sell the skill. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are good at selling uh, products online. You are not the person who designs or mm -hmm. do the product, but marketing it. You can start that. Before I realize, you become an aggregator of people who have products mm -hmm. that are selling to a certain community that you can drive those community. How realistic is telling your creditor that they should stand still for a year, you don't have money to pay, whether it's a bank or somebody that, you know what, based on my financials, 
you have to give me like some breathing space. Do you need some specialists to help you do that negotiation? Or this is normal? Oh, you have to do uh, uh, a projected cash flow. Okay. Your, your creditor would only rely on numbers. So when you have a projected cash flow, projected cash flow, I'm referring to your various monthly or weekly earnings that come onto your hands. And your survivor expenditure, that's food and transport. Mm -hmm. I call it survivor because without that, you can't even earn the income for next month. Mm -hmm. So when you deduct it from it, it gives you a sense of what is net to you. Mm -hmm. Then the servicing is a challenge, so you would have done the total of the servicing. So this is what you take to your, 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 your creditor, and then you sit with your creditor to go through it. Be candid about it, because what is happening is that your creditor is also using other people's money. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they will like the truthful, so they can make provision also in their books. But when you don't tell them, you sprang surprise on them that, oh boss, I cannot pay you, they will have a problem. You can't spring surprises on your creditors. That's why mm -hmm. Bank of Ghana and the banks, when they lend money to us, and you are not servicing for a couple of months, they have to do provision, NPR, you know, they have to provide for that, mm -hmm. your debt. So when you tell them and they look at the cash flow, mm -hmm. they may readjust themselves. I want you to elaborate on two things. You mentioned multiple streams of income. Before we go there, you said food and expenditure are like basic. Uh, sorry, food and transportation. Yes, survival. So, survival, you call it. So, which areas can you cut? If somebody is in debt and they want to start making cuts, can you give us some of the things that are untouchable and the ones that you know that this one you can easily cut from that budget? The food and transport is key mm -hmm. because that's what you use to survive. Unless otherwise you're working from home. Even mm -hmm. that, the transport becomes your communication. Mm -hmm. I remember those days we used to call transport and communication. So, you pay data. Mm -hmm. So what it is is that the transport, what's the mode of the transport that you're mm -hmm. doing? If you use Uber to work, then you probably have to change and see whether you can go out early and join the bus and, and join the community bus. I call it community bus. People call it trotro, but mm -hmm. I call it community bus. And mm -hmm. join the community bus to wherever you're going. Mm -hmm. Readjust yourself. Have your shoes mm -hmm. in, a, in, in the, like our ladies do. They have their shoes in the back. When they get to the office, then they dress dressed up so equally if you have your jacket you could have your jacket off or leave in the office and then when you go you suit up that's what you do that's the that's for the transport so if uber was taking you 40 cities every other day to work which makes you very comfortable but because things are tough see whether you can save 20 cities at all because 20 cities mm -hmm. a day savings on uber gives mm -hmm. you 100 cities a week and mm -hmm. it gives you 400 cities a month mm -hmm. that can service some of the debts that you are, you are owing. So transport yeah. is one area. One Which area. other area can you cut? Food. 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 Maybe you used to order lunch. You can do lunch because you have a crisis. And mm -hmm. you must admit. Like, mm -hmm. I've talked about admission already. Mm -hmm. So instead of my lunch being ordered regularly from mm -hmm. a certain month, I want to save a certain percentage of my lunch. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can look at the combination and the type of food that you have. Maybe instead of having breakfast and lunch, you have brunch. So two in one, and then you increase the qu uh, quantity a bit, and then maybe you have your uh, late dinner. You change some of these things, and at that time also, if you have a family member, you got to procure things, go to the market, make a list, go with your, the spouse, or you yourself can go to the market and procure things and cook for the week. In bulk. And, and in bulk, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And cook for the week and dish them in the various bowls. So Monday bowl, Tuesday bowl, Wednesday bowl. Look, don't feel shy about it. What about school? Can you change your children's school? Maybe they are paying dollars. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed because I just, uh, last month, I just advised parents that they should check these two schools and see the content. Mm -hmm. But if they can afford it, they, they should stay there. But that means that something has to forego. So what are they going to look? So maybe instead of the children buying playstation and things like that you're going to plow those money so those ones mm -hmm. are very critical and very emotional you could be, they are going to new school is now that they're going to readjust you can't take that decision that's a cost cutting measure mm -hmm. it's a cost reduction measure mm -hmm. so one comes with it some talk through others can deal with a knee jerk reaction so do the talk through process and things like that maybe if you're going to change the school and they all agree to change the school mm -hmm. then you can support it by getting some part-time teacher from the first school 
to be coming home to support it. That yeah. teacher will also use that as a other income mm -hmm. for, for him or herself. That could be another solution. That, that could be another solution. You started by talking about how we got here in the first place. Do you think it's possible to live without borrowing? A little borrowing, some will say it doesn't hurt, but that's the beginning of your problems. A little borrowing is a starting point. People borrow small uh, to look, oh, yeah, India, so I'm only going for this. Please don't. Because in a good Bible, I already talks about uh, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Proverbs 22, verse 7. Yes, can you read it for me? Okay, I'll find it. Okay. Proverbs 22, verse 7. A borrower like, naturally will become a slave to the master. Oh, okay. And, and basically, you always the it says uh, uh -huh. the rich rules over the poor mm -hmm. and the borrower is servant to the lender thank you mm. so once you're a borrower <laughs> you're you a slave mm. and we all want to move away from that mm -hmm. so a little borrowing you start with will can create a problem borrow only for an earning because your personal balance sheet is what you have and what you owe mm. So your balance sheet would be things in your room, knowledge itself, maybe you've gone to school, you've borrowed to go to school, it's, it's, a, it's an asset to you. Once you have that, what is it earning as compared to the mm. debt that you are servicing? So borrowing can only be good for my calculation as long as it's tied in to an asset. That then can pay for that. That then can pay for itself. So to go to university, you may borrow. Correct. But not to buy food to eat. Correct. Or not to buy a new car. Correct. I'm sure there's a lot more questions you may have. So if you want to contact Charles, do you do any training, any academy people can come to? How can people get that? No, actu actually, we do um, some radio and things sometimes. Okay. And um, if people want to call us, uh, the, the training line. We'll put a number on the screen. On the Fantastic. Charles Mensah is my chartered financial guru. We've been talking about practical ways to get out of debt as part of laying the right financial foundations for 2023. This is Effective Living Series. This is just the beginning of week four. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll be with you next time with another exciting topic. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.